Hello, and thank you for tuning in. This is Higher Education Matters, an occasional program on events at the Vermont State Colleges and also on higher education issues in general. I'm Jeb Spaulding, the Chancellor of the Vermont State Colleges System, uh, and our guest today will be Shavana Bent, a student at Johnson State College, a senior, a Vermonter. Uh, but before we begin our conversation with Shavana, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the Vermont State College's system as a whole uh, and uh, a little bit about what this program will cover. So the Vermont State Colleges as a group are the de facto extension of the public K-12 system into the post-secondary years. Vermont's very lucky to have a large number of uh, colleges and universities in this state, uh, but where most Vermonters go to school is one of the Vermont State Colleges. Uh, we uh, enroll more Vermonters on an annual basis than all of the other universities and colleges in this state combined. We have five institutions. Uh, in alphabetical order, they start with Castleton University, a little bit west of Rutland, Vermont, uh, Community College of Vermont that has 12 locations around the state, uh, a site within 20 miles of all uh, Vermonters, uh, and hundreds of online courses at Community College of Vermont as well. Uh, Johnson State College, where Shivana is a senior in Johnson, Vermont. Uh, we have Linden State College in Linden, uh, known for its professional programs, uh, things like atmospheric sciences. You might not know that uh, uh, like 16 of the founders of the Weather Channel were graduates of Linden State College. And of course, Vermont Technical College, which has uh, near 100% placement uh, in good paying jobs, offering associate's degrees, bachelor's degrees, and a new master's degree in computer software engineering. So uh, that's the Vermont State College's system. Uh, what we do is enroll Vermonters and transform lives. Higher education is more important than ever. Uh, in this day and age, uh, you know, it's been very clear that your lifetime earnings are going to be likely to be significantly higher if you have higher education in your, in your, uh, your resume. Uh, but it's more than economic. People's health outcomes are better with post-secondary education. People vote more when they have been to college. Uh, and they are much less likely to get into trouble with the law if they've got some college education. So when we use the word college, we think of it as transforming lives. Uh, and that's uh, what we do. So, you know, as far as this program goes, uh, we're hoping to highlight some uh, interesting people and, and things that are happening across the Vermont State Colleges system. So, for example, in the com coming months, we'll have Elaine Collins, who is the president of Johnson State College and who is going to be the president of Northern Vermont University. So that would be an interesting topic to figure out what that's all about. Uh, we'll be talking about affordability issues in general. Right now, there's a lot of attention on Senator Sanders' proposal for free public college. What's that about and how does that fit into the whole college affordability question? So there'll be plenty of issues that are either highlighting some of the interesting people at the Vermont State Colleges or covering uh, topics that are outside of our unique college system but that are still important higher education matters. I can envision having uh, leaders and faculty members from institutions outside of our system and in the system. Today, our guest is most important because what we do uh, is work with students. And Shivana, I want to welcome to today's program. It's nice of you to come. Thanks for having me. Why don't we start with just a little bit about yourself. Yeah. You are a Vermonter? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I grew up in Braintree, Vermont, which is a little town right outside Randolph. We share the same zip code um, with Vermont Tech right up the road. So right. that's um, where I'm coming from. And you know, ever since I was really little and definitely through high school, I knew I wanted to go to college. Um, so Right. So did your mother and father go to college? No, I'm actually a first generation um, college student within my um, direct family, but also extended. That's, that's, that's great. This, it's, it gives me an opportunity to point out that compared to most colleges and universities, uh, the Vermont State Colleges are often a destination for students that come from families where nobody's been to college before. Again, you know, it's a little bit like being the public education system for the post-secondary years. Uh, we have, you know, lots of different kinds of students, star students like yourself. <laughs> uh, we have students that, you know, have an expectation from their family of going to college and a history of doing that. Uh, we have other students where that's not the case. Uh, and what we like to think is that, you know, we don't measure our worth by uh, how many students uh, that apply that we reject or how high our SAT scores. But what we do 
with Vermonters that deserve an opportunity to better their lives. So I'm glad that you chose to uh, go on to college. Did your parents support that, Shivana? Yeah, absolutely. And um, one of the things that brought me to Johnson was my parents were really supportive, supportive of me going to Johnson and to college, but um, they were encouraging, and I think like a lot of first generation students' parents are, that I would pay it myself. Um, and so Johnson was a really affordable option for me. But um, what's kept me there is just like the really high quality education right. and the faculty that cares. So um, it's been both. It's been affordable. It's been um, a great academic experience and all of the above. Yeah, one of the things I'm always interested in at Johnson and all of our state mm -hmm. colleges is that the faculty seem really uh, interested in teaching and students. And uh, at some bigger institutions, universities and such, it's mm -hmm. often that the faculty are uh, you know busy doing research and you might be being taught by a graduate student in large lectures and all these kind of things. And uh, at Johnson, I found, and at the other colleges too, that the professors are there because they like to work and interact with students. Did, have you found that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, even, you know, from my first visit at Johnson, my first day in classes, uh, professors remembered me um, from, you know, talking with them during that uh, either orientation or um, accepted students day. So. You know, right. Even from not going to Johnson, they really knew who I was um, and what I was interested in. You know, they remembered little things I had said. So it was really exciting to know right off the bat that the faculty really cared. Um, and I've absolutely found that they care about each student individually. And um, if you go to their office hours, they're really available. And I think that's one of the highlights of going to Johnson. And I'm sure it's the same across right. the, the VSC. Sort of like I, I expect if you if you do to go to college, you know, mm -hmm. you, it, the experience is somewhat what you make of it. Yeah, uh, but for a student such as yourself, it's a pretty accomplished student. Have you been challenged or had the opportunity to challenge yourself at Johnson State College? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the coursework I've taken has been really challenging. Um, the, I am studying biology with a mathematics minor, so there's always homework to do and more learning to be done. You know, papers to read. Um, but additionally, because it's such a small school and the faculty really care, um, they do do research and they care about um, their students teaching but also about their research. So I've had the opportunity to conduct undergraduate research which has really shaped um, what I'd like to do in my career and my entire experience huh. there. Can you give us a little bit more of examples or an yeah. example of undergraduate research, the kind of thing you've done? Yeah, absolutely. So I started the summer after my freshman year studying with um, Dr. Liz Dulce, um, and we looked at the bacteria isolated from the Vermont asbestos group mine. Hmm. Um, and so it's an extreme environment, and I wanted to know if they produced antibiotics or not, and something that could be clinically relevant. Um, so I got to design my own protocol. Um, Liz, because we call our professors by their first names, um, she was really great and supported independent thinking and that really has helped me grow as a person, as a scientist, as a researcher and all of that. And that um, opened the door for me to go to the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute this past summer, which is um, you know a tier one research institution and I want to study the ocean, so it was really great to spend the summer. You know, wow, the that's Cape. exciting. So I was going to ask you, uh, yeah. you know, what, what you do with that research. Where, what, what have you done with it? And you just sort of gave an answer to it, but do you go out and make presentations places with the research, or, or what, what happens with it? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I've gone to, I think, four different conferences. Um, three of them were national, but one was international. So um, two of my colleagues, my lab partners, and some of my greatest friends at Johnson um, and I had the opportunity to travel to um, Doha, Qatar last November. It's hard Holy to believe mackerel. it's already been a year. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we went <clears throat> and presented our research at the First World Congress on undergraduate research and got to interact with students and um, faculty from around the world and see what kind of research is going on, but also just be immersed in a different culture for you know almost a week. That's fantastic. And it's, 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 it's a point I really did want to make and mm -hmm. highlight, Shivana, because uh, in Vermont, uh, roughly half of the students that are going on to college from high school are going out of state, mm -hmm. uh, and nothing wrong with that. I mean, my own daughters went to 12 years right. of public schools in Montpelier and wanted to see some of the world, but oftentimes people don't realize that uh, at whether it's Castleton or Johnson or Linden or Vermont Tech or even Community College of Vermont, that we have opportunities for our students to experience other parts of the world. What, what kind of opportunities are available to, to students at Johnson to, to, to see other places? 
Yeah, absolutely. So um, the conferences are one option, and a lot of students do go and present, you know, the research or their art or whatever at different conferences, and that's just usually a week or so. But um, I've had many friends take advantage of the National Student Exchange to explore different parts of the country. So instead of going for four years, um, you can go for a semester or a year and discover a different place. Um, and there's also a lot of service trips that right. go out for a week um, and classes that go for a week to different right. places. Yeah, so that we might be working on a water plant, water system or something like that in some developing part of the world. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the National Student Exchange, you mentioned it, just to mm -hmm. sort of really highlight that for the viewers, uh, allows students at Johnson and mm -hmm. the other colleges in the system have s similar programs where you could go to one of hundreds of mm -hmm. other colleges and universities uh, around this country at the same in-state tuition you would pay to stay at Johnson. Uh, and I, I noticed that Johnson has now expanded to the International Student Exchange Program, so that similar uh, model where you go at your in-state tuition to someplace else in the world for, as you mentioned, a semester or a year, yeah. uh, is something that w we offer, and it's an affordable way to do it. I've, I've, I've run into students that say, this was really, through my college experience, the only way I could afford to experience other parts of the world, which yeah, is pretty, pretty nice. So. Well, that's great. So uh, I'm curious, you know, when you went to Johnson, was it a, I mean, did you go to Randolph High School or yeah. where did you? No, I went to Randolph Union. Was it a big change in, uh, you know, a life sort of, was it scary or, or <laughs> what was it like when you went from, a, a, you know, a small Orange County high school to mm -hmm. a college where you're away from home? Yeah, absolutely. So um, when I was applying to colleges, I kind of, you know, I had the same thoughts as your daughter. I wanted to get out. Um, mm -hmm. I applied to probably an exorbitant amount of schools. Mm -hmm. um, and I landed on Johnson, like I said, because of the affordability issue. And I was a little bit worried, you know, there are a lot of students from Randolph that go to Johnson. So I was nervous about having a similar experience to my high school, but I have found that's not the case at all. Right. Um, you, you know, you don't have to see the students you went to high school with unless you really want to. Um, and just the classes and the rigor and all of the academic um, differences really you know, it's it's not the same at all. Okay. Um, and so it was a great experience to see, you know, I'm only an hour and a half away from home, which is just enough for me, as it turns out. Um, I, I <laughs> you can still go, go Yeah, I can home still go occasion. home. I can still go home and do my laundry. <laughs> but yeah. um, uh, it's far enough away and it's different enough that I'm really happy with the choice that I made. And I expect that, you know, even though, uh, as I mentioned, we are like the extension of the mm -hmm. public K-12 system into the post-secondary years uh, at our K-12 system too, you, you have diversity. Mm -hmm. uh, and at our colleges in the Vermont State College system, there are you know, students from over 40 countries from around the world. If you sort of add them up, it's probably more like 50. Yeah. So you, know, you actually do have the opportunity to interact not only with Vermonters, but other students from around this country and around this world. I, I, has that been your experience, Shivana? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's definitely, you know, a much greater diversity than at least in my high school. Um, and that's, you know, in viewpoints from around the country and around the world, but also just, you know, seeing the way people think in this new setting and um, really asking challenging questions to themselves and um, opening up their minds. So that diversity has been really interesting as well, you know, from Vermonters, but also opening up um, the, the worldview to other right. people and having um, the different experiences from students from everywhere. And I think one of the other interesting things that I found is that at Johnson, at least, we have a lot of students continuing their education. Right. So you have older students coming back to school and you know learning from their life experiences and their wisdom has been really interesting. Yeah, that's, that is interesting. That actually brings up the other end of the spectrum mm -hmm. too. So you have, and in Vermont, there are somewhere around 60,000 Vermonters that have some college education and no degree. And yeah. one of our, strategic priorities for the Vermont State College's system as a group is to be uh, offering more online programming, mm -hmm. flexible programming, and being accessible for sort of your non-traditional, perhaps your older students. We also are welcoming uh, high school students. And yeah. I wonder, have you ever run into any of the students that are doing courses through the dual enrollment program or, or early college? Yeah, definitely. Um, I have run so into them. So tell our viewers what, oh, yeah. the, what the early college program yeah, is. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, so early college is just a program where you can take uh, classes at any of the Vermont State Colleges, as I understand yeah, it, yeah. Um, for free during your senior year of high school. And you have that first year under your belt. You have credits and you get to get a diploma from your high school as well as, you know, that first year is paid for and you have the experience. Yeah. So, I, I mean, that's... It has been growing, mm -hmm. and you know what we found from a from a state interest 
is that uh, students that either take a course, like you know, like to the dual enrollment program, so they're still going to their high school, but they yeah. can take a course, or if they combine their senior year of high school and first year of college, where they're really going to college mm -hmm. for that year, um, you know, are more likely to continue on to college than a, a, a same similar demographic group that didn't have that experience. So from a state perspective, in terms of trying to get more students to go on to college, it's a very effective way of doing it. But also, from the student and family perspective, mm -hmm. and I, I think people really ought to think about this, um, you know, uh, if you were going for an associate's degree, uh, you're halfway and you, there. <laughs> you're halfway there. So you just cut your tuition costs in half. Mm -hmm. If you're going for a bachelor's degree, you just cut the tuition by 25%. So in terms of people, you know, that are parents maybe or students thinking about, mm -hmm. gee, you know, the affordability issue, the early college and dual enrollment is, a, is an opportunity that Vermont's put in place for high school students to really uh, have the opportunity to, uh, you know, get more uh, challenged and, and, and yeah, interested in their senior year, which, you know, it has, wasn't that long ago that my, my children went through high school and oftentimes people in their senior year of high school are kind of coasting along. Yep. Uh, this is an opportunity to avoid that and cut down on your, your college costs as well. Yeah, so, absolutely. So, uh, you know, I, I, I did want to talk just a little bit, Siobhan, about uh, athletics, and I actually don't mm -hmm. know if you've been involved with athletics or not, but, you know, no, across our, our state colleges, I mean, if you think of a place like Castleton, mm -hmm. I think they've got uh, 27 or 29 uh, varsity NCAA sports. Uh, Castleton brought football back to Vermont yeah. into the public university. It's the only public institution in the state that has a football team. Uh, you know, uh, Johnson is, uh, you know, women's basketball and soccer and mm -hmm. they have rugby programs and all kinds of athletics. So yeah, uh, is, is that something that you see students taking advantage of on, on, a, on a, a widespread basis or just, just a few? No, definitely. I think that um Going to the small school and you know having those opportunities, I think a lot of students that maybe wouldn't have done athletics at um, big institutions feel comfortable with it. Um, they know that they can work personally with their professors to manage their course load and do sports. You know, we have three season athletes pretty regularly. Um, I like to consider myself an honorary member of the cross country team. <laughs> I'm friends with all of them, but I don't run. Um, so it's definitely. Um, everyone has the opportunity to do a sport even if they don't take advantage of that. Um, it's really not easy to do because it's a lot of work to be a student athlete. I right. have recognized that, yeah. um, which is why I don't do it. Right. But, um, well, you're a pretty special student, Shivana. Yeah. So, and, Lots and, of other and, and a motivated student. <laughs> but, you know, I think it's kind of interesting that I've, I've noticed that uh, as a group, oftentimes the student athletes, uh, you know, as far as grade point average, yeah, do they better do really or, well. or better than the, the the entire college population as a whole. So yeah, absolutely. I they think have. having something where people, I mean, you found other ways where the, you mm -hmm. know they've got something that motivates them uh, and involves them, sort of yeah. makes them more organized overall. Absolutely, and they um, form a lot of the teams do their own study groups, so their teammates will help them with subjects they struggle in and. It's really just a big community of people that's there for you right. to support you in academics and athletics. So one of the uh, efforts that we're making across the Vermont State College system as a whole is to try to make sure that students that show up on the first day of mm -hmm. college actually make it out the other end with a degree. And uh, you know, while we understand that if we are going to offer the chance to most Vermonters to go on to college that as opposed to a, a very exclusive school, let's say a yeah. fine school like a Middlebury College where everybody's prepared and everybody's yeah. supported and they don't really, they tend not to have as many of the emotional and, and financial challenges that a lot of our, our students do. Uh, while we realize that, we're trying to do everything we can to support students early so that they can actually stay and graduate hopefully on time. Do you, are you aware of what kind of efforts Johnson makes in that regard? I'm just curious. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So um, even as I would consider myself a pretty prepared student um, coming to school, uh, I've accessed their academic support services. And um, in my senior year, my junior year, I've been an academic coach. So there's a lot of focus on students teaching other students, but there's also a lot of professional resources available. Um, as far as academics, and then at Johnson at least, and I'm sure it's the same across the VSC, there's our wellness center, and that really helps students transition through either, you know, their financial hardships that are causing some emotional stress in their life or whatever they dealt with during high school, and um, 
really helping them be successful right. in college and um, getting over that as a person and growing through it. Well, that's great. So I'm curious, you know, uh, in the Vermont State College system, we have a diversity. I mentioned mm -hmm. Community College of Vermont, 12 locations around yeah. the state, uh, night courses, uh, you know, a lot of certificate programs, which is something that we're all working on. And, that, you know, it, it's clear that unless you're a superstar like LeBron James, <laughs> some kind of college is important or some kind right. of post-secondary education. But it's not always a bachelor's degree or mm -hmm. even an associate's degree for some people getting, uh, you know, a, a certified bookkeeping uh, yeah, certificate or some kind of a credential, uh, uh, plumbers or electrical apprenticeship program. There are different ways mm -hmm. of, of uh, uh, acquiring that post-secondary education. Uh, and we have the diversity from community college to Vermont Technical College, but with places like Castleton and Johnson and to a large extent Linden that mm -hmm. are uh, strong liberal arts colleges, how do you see that preparing students for the workplace? These days, I think parents are saying, I want to make sure that if my child and, and we make that, that yeah. commitment and oftentimes work hard to pay for it, that it leads to a job. Uh, what's your take on liberal arts as a, as a way to get people into the uh, into the workforce, Shivana? You know, it's funny you ask that. I was just um, out to dinner with my parents last night, and they sort of posed the same question to right. me um, since it's my last year, and I do plan on going on to more school. But the thing that I think is most valuable, valuable about the liberal arts education is that I've really learned how to think critically. And, um, you know, my little brother just graduated high school. He's going for a trade at Vermont Tech, and that's what he wants to do, so he's going to have this skill. And I don't necessarily have, you know, a skill set that will prepare me for a specific job, but I do think what I've learned is how to problem solve and how to find the answers. So in any job that I might take on, I have um, this background that allows me to go out and, you know, be a problem solver and really find the answers that my employers are looking for, and I think that has made me, you know, I'm still nervous to graduate right. in May, but I feel like I'm really prepared to go and either get a job or go to graduate school or right. continue on. And I think that that is something that's really hard to define, especially to parents. You know, my parents are sort of questioning, right. what are you going to do? You right. know, what skills do you have? But I feel like I'm prepared. Well, there's some, you know, interesting uh, statistics out there that, you know, m most of the uh, CEOs in this country mm -hmm. are liberal arts majors. Oh, that's funny. Most of your political leaders are mm -hmm. liberal arts majors, uh, and the world is changing rather rapidly. And mm -hmm. you know, like I think uh, probably the top ten ja job categories that are out there right now may not even exist ten or twenty years from yeah. now. So being able to have those critical thinking skills, your communication skills, uh, analytical skills is, mm -hmm. is very important. I think it'll serve you very, very well, Shivana. So we don't have too much more time, but I thought. Since you're at Johnson, mm -hmm. um, you know, we could just briefly touch on uh, the unification. And yeah. what that is for the viewers is that uh, Johnson State College and Linden State College, two relatively small institutions in the northern tier of the state, are being unified into Northern Vermont University with campuses in Johnson and Linden. Uh, and the idea behind that is actually to make sure that the limited dollars we have are used to enhance the student experience. So uh, even now, instead of two presidents, we have one president, mm -hmm. we have one CFO, and so forth. And that allows us to put money back into the students. I also like to take a look before, you had two institutions, each with their own faculty, that don't even really know each other. Yeah. And now we have one institution, two campuses, but a faculty that's twice as big. And you can offer more uh, programming and using technology for the students than they could otherwise. But I'm just curious, are students aware of, of, of this going on? Uh, if they are, are they nervous about it, excited about it, or some of both? Or what, what's, what's your, your thought on that, Shivana? <laughs> yeah, so um, as the student government president, I've kind of, you know, I've gone to, you know, all of the meetings about unification and tried to really get students involved and their input about it. And from what, you know, we can tell, you know, myself and, you my executive team and the senators and whatever, um, students are excited. They're a little bit nervous because, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'll have all of my classes here on campus. You know, I might take it um, remotely through the ideal classroom at Johnson and the equivalent at Linden. Um, so there's What's the ideal classroom? The ideal classroom. So that is our telepresence classroom. It's another yeah weird word, but it's essentially just, um, you, we have two TV screens and one can be written on as a smart board, so it functions as a whiteboard, and then 
the students and teacher are recorded. Um, and so it's actually, I've taken my first class in there this semester. It's a really a neat system because I missed class for the board meeting and I was able to you know, okay. attend virtually yeah. because there are these different options for remote um, viewing and attending classes at Linden, which is really cool. Like they have some great programs like atmospheric sciences that I thought were awesome, but I didn't want to go to Linden. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that it, it actually has the potential. I remember yeah. reading about some more senior level accounting course last spring that really didn't have enough students to justify its running at Johnson or at Linden, but when they combined it yeah. and used those electronic classrooms, they could actually run the class. So it was a, it's just an example of providing opportunities for students. Yeah, and I think that's a great example. And I think a lot of the mathematics examples of the classes I'm taking now are math um, and just department wide, you know, there's these opportunities for growth. And I think that as we move forward, um, Dr. Collins, Elaine Collins is gonna really be a leader at Johnson. And I hope that the students at Linden like her as much as we do, because she's really great and made us feel comfortable with the transition. Yeah, it's exciting too, uh, you know, in terms of thinking through what the uh, sort of the brand and the logo mm -hmm. and the name were going to be, yeah. how much uh, attraction and, and pride there is in being from the northern part of the state. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that uh, Dr. Collins wants Lyndon and Johnson, Northern Vermont University, to be recognized and in reality a key player in the economy and the social well-being of, of the northern part of the state. So uh, that's, that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. You know, Shivana, I, I, I should have mentioned that you are a member of the Board of Trustees, and that's, that's a pretty exciting opportunity, too. I know you're, you're fairly new. You've been to a couple of committee meetings and a yeah. board meeting. Uh, you know, any, any thoughts about that? Um, I think the biggest thing I've learned so far is that the caring I felt at Johnson is really system-wide from you know the top, from yourself, and then all the board members. Mm -hmm. Each person really cares wholeheartedly and deeply about the Vermont State Colleges, and you can feel that sense of welcome and caring on every single campus. Well, great. You know, I think that's a pretty good place to stop, because we really only have another minute or so, mm -hmm. Shivana. Are there any things that uh, you were hoping I was going to ask you that I didn't that you actually would like to just sort of finish up with? Um, no, other than that, I really, you know, I recommend going to college. I recommend the Vermont State Colleges. I really, I love Johnson, so I'm a little bit biased, but they're all really great places for all types of students from Vermont. I think it's a great Well, option. great. Thank you for being our first yeah. guest. And I want to thank the viewers for tuning in. This is Higher Education Matters. I'm Jeb Spaulding, the Chancellor of the Vermont State Colleges System. Uh, and this is going to be a monthly program that will be broadcast and rebroadcast around the state at various times. It's a chance to highlight some of the interesting things and people within the Vermont State Colleges System, but also to address higher education issues in general. So I wouldn't be surprised if we have some esteemed visitors from the University of Vermont or VSAC or uh, some of our workforce partners, certainly faculty and students again. So I want to thank the viewers for taking the time to look at this program. Uh, if you want to find out more about the state colleges, go to vsc.edu. And if you want to make suggestions on future programs, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much.